But what happens when I'm looking for a scale in the encyclopedia? How do I find it? Well, to answer that question, first we have to define what it is that you're exactly looking for. What do you mean? Well, are you looking for the scale by its name or uh, intervallic formula or by how many notes it has or some other property like symmetry, for example? I have no idea. Let me think. Hold on. Let me help you. We'll talk about the PDF version later on, but let's start with the paperback version. For any type of search, you will use volume 12, the master index. The master index contains several indexes that you can use to find scales from different perspectives. Here are the different indexes that you can use. There are seven different indexes. So let's say you want to find a scale by name. Give me the name of a scale. All right, let's try Aeolian. Aeolian? Why not something more obscure like all right, never mind. Aeolian. So we can use this last index here. Index of all scales. Default and alternative names. Sorted alphabetically. Page 201. There it is. Volume 6, page 11. That's right. I was just testing you. I have it right here. Okay. Give me the enigmatic scale. I've heard that name many times, but I have no idea how it sounds. Now that's more like it. The index says it's in volume 1, page 227, uh, volume 6, page 69, and volume 6, page 70. What? It's in all of those places? That doesn't make any sense. Calm down. Let's start with volume 6, which is what you're holding in your hand. It's showing you page 69 with an asterisk. Found it. It's the source and related modes page that contains the enigmatic scale. Right, and that's what the asterisk is telling us, that the enigmatic scale is the source scale. And that's why it's also in volume one. Volume one is just the 344 source scales with their related modes, one for each page. It's a very useful volume to research scales because you can browse through all the scales and their related modes pretty fast. When you're studying scales for modal composition, improvisation, or just to practice them, you can use volume one to find interesting sets of related modes instead of having to go through the other volumes with a scale on every single page. Plus, you can use it in conjunction with one of the core volumes so you can see both pages simultaneously. So here, we have the enigmatic and all of its related modes. And simultaneously over here at the same time, we can be looking at mode two of the same exact scale in volume six. I get it, that's a pretty good idea. Okay, so let's say I have C, F, and B flat as my scale. How do I find it? Easy, C to F is a perfect fourth. F to B flat is another perfect fourth. And B flat to C is a whole step. So the intervallic formula is perfect fourth, perfect fourth whole. So this scale is a three note scale. We can use the index of all scales grouped by note count, sorted by intervallic formula, page 114. The intervallic formulas are sorted alphabetically. There it is, perfect fourth, perfect fourth whole. It's a chordal in volume two, page 36. And it is not the source. I wonder which scale is the source. So I go back a couple pages to find the source scale. The source is the C sus4 triad. Yes, the sus4 triad is the source. These are the related modes. And because we usually think of these scales as chords, we call them inversions, but they're actually related modes. You can see how the source could have been any of these scales. We decided to use the sus4 because it's well known. I get it. Now let's say I want to find an interesting scale, like one of those scales of limited transpositions like you were talking about before. One of those symmetric scales. No problem. There are two ways to do this. Let me show you an interesting way first. Let's use the first index here. Index of source scales grouped by mode count, sorted by note count and intervallic formula. So here it says scales with three modes. If we go to the end of this list, you will notice that there are some scales with a longer intervallic formula. This means these scales have more than three notes, but only three modes. And therefore, 
they must be symmetric. Right. So, for example, the Raga and Dupriya India showing here has to be symmetric with only three modes. And if we count the intervals in the intervallic formula, we can see it has six notes. Whoa. And those are the only symmetric scales with three modes? Not at all. These are the only symmetric source scales with three modes. See, this is an index of source scales. If you want to see all symmetric scales with three modes, you can use the index that says index of all scales grouped by mode count, sorted by note count and intervallic formula. So there's the Raga and Dupriya India, but you can see all other symmetric scales with three modes. Wait, I, I don't get it. Well, if the Raga and Dupriya India scale is symmetric, then all of its related modes must also be symmetric. So looking for a symmetric scale in the index of source scales is much faster. But if you want to see all symmetric scales with, let's say, three modes, there's a better index for that. The index of symmetric scales grouped by mode count, sorted by note count and intervallic formula. Here, all scales are symmetric. And there's the Raga and Dupriya India. That's pretty cool. But look, the scale is in so many places. Just look at the list of volumes and pages. Yep. As you can see, this scale is in volume one because it is a source scale. And this is the volume with all scales showing only the source scales and related modes page. It's in volume two because it has three modes. On page 105 because it is the source. And on page 106 where it is shown in the individual scale page format in all keys but it is also in volume nine because this is the volume with only symmetric scales. So if I wanna browse only symmetric scales, I can use that volume, right? Exactly. If all you're doing is studying symmetric scales, then all you need is volume nine. Awesome. But wait, it also says it's in volume 10. What's volume 10? Well, volume 10 contains all of the bi-triadic hexatonic scales. And the Raga and Dupriya India is not only a symmetric scale, but also a bi-triadic hexatonic, which is why you'll see it in volume 10. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about next time. Bi-triadic hexatonics. What are they and why are they important? So come back next time, like, subscribe, comment, hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching.